Today let's take a look at some first derivatives of sine of x. On the left hand side I have here first derivatives of trigonometric functions. It's a really good idea to memorize these, especially the first three. We can have a proof and show why they equal what they do. But for most cases it's going to be easiest, simplest, so just memorize them. Accept things as they are. Okay, our first example is sine squared of x excuse me, sine squared of root x. And remember, this is the same as if we said the whole function sine root x squared. So we're going to apply the chain rule here. We need to take all of sine squared uh, root x as u squared, right? And we're going to say, so this is, first of all, u squared. Derivative of that is 2u, so we have 2 sine root x and now we need to let's get rid of that for a moment I don't want to confuse anybody we're going to take the derivative of that inside function as per the chain rule so we've got x to the one half the derivative of that we drop the exponent down is one half x to the minus one half or root or excuse me one over two root x and then finally we have to take the derivative of sine of x or sine of root of x we have over there on the left. And so that is our answer. 2 sine root x times 1 over 2 root x times cosine x. Number 2, the square root of x times sine of x. And they don't make the easy mistake here, which is to say this is equal to x to the 1 half, so we take the derivative of that 1 half root one half x to the negative one half or one over two root x like we have here and then multiply that times the square root multiply that times the derivative of sine of x which is cosine of x here we need to use the product rule and so we're going to take the derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first in in that order or the opposite since addition has a commutative property so let's take the derivative of the first which is one over two root x Again, root x is x to the 1 half. We drop down the exponent and subtract 1 from the exponent, which is 1 half x to the negative half. And then put that into fraction form here. So we're going to take that times sine, times the whole second function there, sine of x. We're going to add to that the first function times the derivative of the second function. Derivative of the second function is cosine x. Easy as pie. Next up, we have one over sine, one over sine x, and again, this is kind of tricky, but it is the quotient rule that we need to apply. We don't have a polynomial on top; we have just a constant, and so it might seem like it's just a regular fraction. We can do something different, but uh, in fact, we have to use the quotient rule. So we're going to take. It's important to get this one correct in order. The product, uh, the product rule we can do in either order, but the quotient rule, since we're dealing with subtraction, we have to do in a particular order. We're going to take the derivative of the first function times the second function. Derivative of the first function, of course, is zero. Any constant changes to zero. We're going to subtract from that the first function times the derivative of the second function. Excuse me. This should be... sine x derivative of the first function times the second function minus the first function times the derivative of the second function all over the second function squared and so what we end up with that's nothing we end up with cosine of x over sine squared of x number four x squared plus x all over sine of x. And again, we have the quotient rule that we need to apply here. The derivative of the first function, which is x squared plus x. Our derivative is 2x plus 1. Remember, drop our exponent down as per the power rule. Subtract 1 from that exponent. All of our single power variables change to 1. So the derivative of the first function times the second function minus the first function 
times the derivative of the second function all over the second function squared and that is our simplified form for now. Finally, let's look at number five. We have the square root of one minus sine squared of x. Here we need to apply the chain rule twice. We have an outside function of the square root of some variable, so we could say that's u to the one half, but u is equal to one minus sine squared of x, and here we have another place where we need to apply the chain rule. So let's first take the square root, or sorry, we'll take the first derivative of that u there, which is one over two times the square root, or so if we had all of this to the one half, we're gonna take one over two square root, we'll take a drop down that exponent and subtract one from that exponent. We get to we just move the square root to the bottom, put a two in front of it, one minus sine squared of x. And we need to multiply that by the first derivative of this inside function. I remember our derivatives of constants change to zero, so we have zero minus, and we're going to take the outside function here to sine of x. Then we need to multiply that again times the derivative of sine of x, which is cosine of x. And we can simplify here. Let's get rid of this stuff. We can simplify. So we have 2, negative 2 negative 2 sine of x times cosine of x and all of that is over 2 times the square root of 1 minus sine squared of x just get rid of those 2's there and we end up with sine x cosine x on top and on the bottom the square root of 1 minus sine of x. Right, so again, it's easiest to just memorize at least these first three derivatives of co uh, trigonometric functions, and then we need to apply the basic rules of derivatives all the same, even though we're dealing with trigonometric functions.